companies are, are dominating this exciting frontier and introducing, um, you know, new lifestyle changes, enhancing medical treatments, and reducing health care. So I want to introduce our first dominator. <laughs> a little sizzle to this. Um, um, Edward Cox, he's the CEO of DeThera, and he's gonna share what they're doing. Thank you. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, everyone. Um, so it was a real treat, because I just got to meet uh, David from Click Therapeutics. And one of the reasons that that was fun is I've been using them for about the last 12 months as an explanation uh, to people that don't know what digital therapeutics are, what a digital therapeutic is. And so it's uh, a real credit to Jill pulling this thing together because uh, digital therapeutics are so brand new. Uh, the term is, I think, less than 36 months old. And the idea that now here at Bio, uh, we're, we're getting to raise the profile of this, uh, this new type of treatment, I think is really, really exciting. Um, also, my plan is that to give our presentation, then afterwards just sit to the side, and then David will get his, his, and if we have any questions, we could just do them at the end. So, um, so as we are a publicly traded company, I would refer to our forward-looking statement. Uh, please read that before you make any investments. Uh, <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure everyone was able to read all of those words, so no problem. Uh, so as I said, uh, DeThera Sciences is a publicly traded company based here, actually in San Diego, in the area of digital therapeutics, uh, primarily focused on reducing anxiety, increasing the quality of life in the areas of Alzheimer's and dementia. We're really excited to say that we just completed a clinical study with the University of California, San Diego, and I'll talk through, through those results momentarily and that we're excited also to go into new and different indications using the same tech platform. So we all know these numbers. Uh, Alzheimer's is the coming pandemic of the developed world. Uh, we have nearly 50 million Alzheimer's dementia patients somewhere around the world today and by 2050, 30 years from now, we're gonna, that number is almost going to triple. And the fiscal impact of this is crippling. Last year, there was almost $800 billion of cost related to Alzheimer's and dementia care. Uh, these are huge numbers. And, and when you think about the other leading causes of death over the last 30 years, we have largely beat almost all of these back. Uh, there were death sentences 30 years ago that we've almost entirely controlled. Unfortunately, that's not the case for Alzheimer's dementia, and it's twofold. One, it's a function of population. As we have an aging population, you're going to see this growth curve. But the other is there's very few pharmaceutical products that have actually made a difference. We've had 400 clinical trials and almost 200 drugs with one thing approved in the last three decades. So while we're waiting for that silver bullet, while we're waiting for that uh, biopharmaceutical solution, we need to do something that can impact the lives of patients right now. One of those really powerful ways to help these patients is through a therapy called reminiscence therapy. Reminiscence therapy is a really effective way to directly reduce anxiety and increase the quality of life in Alzheimer's dementia patients. Been around since the 70s and, and not to be too cavalier, but a good example of this is the movie The Notebook. Uh, a gentleman sits with his wife and talks through the story of their life, and it has a profound impact on her. But the problem is it also shows the limitations, is he had to sit there over the course of a whole day, and tomorrow it's not going to help her. So along with the rise of reminiscence therapy is a rise of the indication or of the, uh, the style of medicine that we're talking about today, digital therapeutics. And at its core, the way that we simplistically explain digital therapeutics is Finding a therapy that works, that is highly effective in the real world, but is not scalable, and to use digital therapeutics to scale it. Uh, the majority of the innovation so far has been in either cardio or uh, smoking cessation, but it's based on very, very good science around therapies, frequently done with therapists, nurses, doctors, that are very effective, but not scalable, and using technology to close that gap. So what is our product? Our product is called Reminix, and it's Reminiscence Therapy for Anxiety Reduction. And, and what it is, is it's a, uh, a tablet-based platform that allows the family to engage directly in reducing anxiety uh, with their loved one. What we have is a uh, AI chatbot, or specifically we have a, uh, a state machine that takes in content from the family, whether it be audio, video, photos, visuals, and turns them into a slideshow and then pushes it to a tablet uh, that a patient is holding and begins to play them stories. 
But what's interesting about that is, and, and here's one of kind of the interesting things about this is, there are a lot of powerful ways that you can use reminiscence therapy, but it keeps coming back to the same thing. How does it fit into someone's life? We all know that if you scrapbook, there's really positive effects that come from that. But over our whole life, we may only scrapbook three or four times. This has to find a way into people's everyday life. And what we found is one of the ways it communicates that is transgenerational, you can be 16 or you can be 60, is text messages. That's why so many things are moving to chatbots. Because my dad, who won't do all kinds of things with Facebook, absolutely will still send text and messages. And a 15-year-old, they may Snapchat, they may Instagram, they may Facebook, but they still do text messages. And so the ability to compress these choices down to your grandmother would like this content, this, con this uh, audio, this photo, this visual, will you respond to that, has simplified the user interface so much that we see anybody of any age from the family side being able to do it. So what do we do with that? So, so we then take, because and I think was something that, that people frequently ask is, well, how are you going to have a dementia patient or even a, an elderly patient you know, use this product? They're not using the product at all. They're merely receiving it. One of the interesting things about drugs that's different than a lot of other uh, wellness products is drugs are passive. They are metabolized. You take it, it starts working. You do not have to get in a headspace. You do not have to direct wellness. You do not have to meditate. It just works without you doing something. And that's what we're trying to match. The way our product works is you pick up tablet, it starts playing the stories, put down. You are not asking the patient to do anything. You are merely asking them to watch a moving photo frame that gives them this content. But what we do with that is we then capture information and iterate on that. We can do things like eye tracking, eye gaze, but what's really exciting more than anything is emotional feedback. We can actually know the kinds of stories that are making grandma smile. We can see indirect impact what are the things that move the needle the most? And then feed that information back to the family. And by doing this constantly, what happens is families learn the kind of stories and the kind of content that has the biggest impact on that patient directly. Because again, one of the interesting things about mass marketed consumer technology versus medical products is it's personalized. It has to be. All kinds of, if, if you wanted to have something that was working for everyone, it's called television. But the difference between that and something highly personalized is realizing that Grandma uh, Williams really gets the most powerful impact when she sees pictures of her grandkids, and here's Nat King Cole, and, and, and it's about where they grew up. Versus Mrs. Wilson or Mrs. Johnson, who's further gone, it has to be stories of her husband. You gotta have Glenn Miller in the background and, and those kind of things and we get to see that kind of feedback and push it back to the family. And so Riminex is, uh, as I said, it's, it's a holy, uh, uh, it's a full stack technology solution. The family is uh, interacting with the AI chatbot and the patient is interacting with the tablet. Uh, real quick, very briefly, my background originally is investment banking. I was the former uh, president of a biotech company, uh, which is why I've come to bio so many times. Uh, which we successfully took public onto the NASDAQ, and then I was the head of global business development for a pharmaceutical company before becoming uh, the CEO of Dethera. Uh, our chief technology officer, Dave Keen, was the former software architect of the Sony PlayStation Network, a total technology savant who at 35 got colon cancer and thought he was going to die. Uh, fortunately enough, it was stage two, so he survived, but that action catalyzed Dave and a team to build what became Dethera. Very briefly, I'm going to go through the clinical data because I think this is the most important. And this is, I think, what separates digital therapeutics from wellness. Actually hard clinical data showing results-based outcome. So we measure the state anxiety inventory and we saw a meaningful reduce in anxiety in this, or in this measurement. We saw an even bigger move in the HAD score. Um, again, almost a, half, almost a full uh, cut in half of this anxiety for this certain uh, measurement. The emotional thermometer we saw, saw one of the biggest moves, taking it from 1.9 all the way down to below 4. But one of the things that was the most exciting is the caregiver questionnaire. Uh, the depression levels of caregivers in Alzheimer's and dementia is horrifying. In some cases, it's reported as high as two-thirds of caregivers suffer through clinical depression by watching their loved ones slowly decay in front of them. The ability for us to show time and time again that this not only helps the patient, but as it turns out, helps the caregiver by crowdsourcing support from the family members that might not live close by is one of the most exciting things that we saw through this. 
Um, so one of the ways that I try to simplify this to really make it very visceral is what we're trying to do. So what we think is that if there was a big red button on your phone and you asked someone to hold that button down for three minutes a week, not more than that, but for three minutes a week, you could show that you were clinically reducing the anxiety of their loved ones. We think it's 100% of people will do that. And that's what we're trying to do is find a way that fits into people's lives so that by holding this button down for three minutes a week, not only do they know that they're making an impact on their loved one, but we tell them and it makes an impact on themselves as well. Thank you so much. I don't know about you, but I am like, I am just so moved by what you guys are doing. Um, I, just, I mentioned this yesterday, I went to visit my aunt who um, has, has Alzheimer's and um, her daughter, who I did not even know, my cousin, uh, ended up in the hospital. Um, she absolutely <coughs> broke down from trying to manage the care of her parents and it, and it's just uh, so debilitating. So um, I'm, I'm like, I think I know someone who might be able to help. <laughs> um, okay, um, th this, this next individual was introduced to me um, not too long ago, and I was really excited when um, David got on the phone with me and started sharing some of their results. It's, it's just astounding. I, I just cannot wait to see the developments um, as, it's, as they start to expand onto into different areas of, of help. So um, let's uh, invite co-founder and CEO from Click Therapeutics, David Benjuf Klein, to the stage. Thank you. Thanks. So, oh. Sorry about that, figuring this out here. So, yeah, thanks, and, and that was a great, very concise presentation. I, I feel bad going right after it, but um, I'll be relatively quick so we can leave some time for uh, questions here, and I'll skip over a lot of our corporate deck, given that you all are here. You probably know a good deal about this space. We create technology-based interventions to improve health outcomes. So we call those digital therapeutics, and they're really based on our now clinically validated platform, these programs are really designed to work in conjunction with or in lieu of pharmacotherapies. And at least ours are, are highly personalized, so they're data-driven. Really, no two people receive the same intervention. We have um, our, our lead product, actually, on our platform is a product called Clicketeen. I'll go through some of that with you in a bit. Uh, it's currently actually being commercialized. Um, through our partner, a company called Magellan uh, Health, which, is, which has about 50 million uh, lives that they cover. Uh, so we're commercializing clicotine for smoking cessation to millions of covered lives, uh, really as we speak, and started that about a year ago. Um, just actually took an investment in from Magellan a, about a month ago. And so that, so that partnership has been uh, maturing, let's say. We're a B2B company. So we're, we're not focused on really developing our own sales channels through, through consumers. We are partnered with uh, pharma companies. We're, we're focused on really partnering with pharma companies on one side and, and really payers and providers and so on on the other. Um, the digital therapeutics paradigm really represents a, a win for everyone, for pharma and payers, uh, can increase revenue and, and, and decrease risk. Patients are afforded more effective and efficient healthcare and we really derive revenue from those profits or savings uh, and have a very low or low user acquisition, acquisition cost as a result. Um, so like I said, we are partnered with a company called Magellan Health. I'll focus more on that one uh, for, to, in, in the order to, to, uh, to save time here, I guess. Uh, but we have a number of different partners. Um, not all of it is, is, is actually public at the moment. Uh, we have a pipeline of, of different products. Uh, so we actually were pursuing a digital therapeutic for insomnia and a digital therapeutic for depression and one for heart attack. And those are all in development. I'm not sure how much people are really following the developments in this space, but really we have, we're, we're embracing a regulated pathway uh, for the bulk of our future programs and really looking to commercialize these 
uh, very similar to like someone would commercialize a drug, albeit the regulatory pathway is, follows a, a what's called SAMD, so software as medical device pathway. Um, the commercial and, and payer and reimbursement models are much more akin to pharmaceuticals. So we're actually right in the process now of preparing for an upcoming meeting with the FDA uh, for our product for major depressive disorder, which if, if I have time, I can get into some of the data behind that. Um, we actually, we, we've got now four, four peer-reviewed published articles on, on, a, on a, a clicatine clinical study uh, that we ran of 416 uh, patients. I guess probably most impressive was the engagement that we saw on our platform. The average patient, and, and I'm including the, this is an a, a ITT group analysis, not a completer analysis, but amongst the entire 416 people, the average user opened our application over 100 times over the core eight-week study. So if you can imagine that, that's about twice a day. Um, so we are, you know, and over the years have gotten very, very good at engagement and patient engagement. Um, at really, and and again, these are all now published data, but really we saw a pretty, pretty significant increase in both access to pharmacotherapies during the study and adherence to pharmacotherapies during the study. I won't talk too much about those exact numbers, uh, but if you, want to, if you want more, you can go onto our website and download the, the published research. And this, this really goes to the heart of digital therapeutics and why they're so important. If you see this slide here, you know, what we've seen in our study, and we're actually in going into a, a series of investigator-sponsored randomized controlled trials this year with Clicatine, but we saw after six months about a 35.3% uh, quit rate. Uh, so that means, you know, having smoked for at least 30 days amongst the ITT group. Again, that's a, that's a you know, full analysis. It's not a completer analysis, right? So... If you compare that really to Chantix or nicotine replacement therapy or the two other uh, best commercial programs, we really, really, you know, pretty significantly in, in the lead there. And I, I think that that goes to the coming revolution of digital therapeutics and that these software programs, we pretty much know now, and it's not just from the research we've done, it's from just all kinds of research, that software can drive outcomes similar to like a drug sometimes even better for a wide variety of different disorders. Software plus drugs can result in, in better effect sizes and more compliance. We also have a product for, for the treatment of major depressive disorder. Again, I won't talk too much about that, but if anyone has questions, you can talk to me. We've actually been through, and this is a, a good example, it's essentially dosed over the course of six weeks, three times a week for about 10 to 15 minutes, minutes each session. And what we see now in, in two randomized control trials against active control groups, so really a, a very robust active controls, we've seen an over 40% reduction in the symptoms of major depressive disorder in the intervention arm versus uh, uh, probably around a 15% in the active control. So very, very significant uh, outcomes in terms of, of decreasing uh, symptoms of major depressive disorder. We're actually taking this through a regulated pathway, um, seeking really what's called a de novo device classification uh, for the treatment of major depressive disorder. And I think that's what you're gonna see in, in terms of the industry. I, I think in the next you know, one to three years, you'll see doctors actually prescribing these products and you'll see payers reimbursing for these products. And that's really what's on the horizon. Right now, you're seeing different business models and different innovation come, but the bottom line is that these software programs can drive outcomes like a drug, are in, in many or most cases cheaper than drugs, can be combined with drugs to make them work better, or can be used in, in lieu of drugs. And we have a product, um, a number of different products. We have product development for insomnia, and that's a great example. You know, the current, really, drugs on the market for insomnia um, you've got, you know, sleep doctors prescribing Benadryl because they don't want to prescribe these highly addictive drugs. And you've got people who want, who, who want treatment for these things but are really losing sleep for behavioral reasons. They just got a new job or, you know, there's simple behavioral steps from setting a bedtime, from darkening out your room and, 
you know, all of these types of things which can really help insomnia. And in, in many cases, these behavioral interventions for insomnia work much better than, than drugs do. And that's a perfect example of, of things that we think in the next few years, you'll see doctors actually prescribe it. If there was a, let's say, FDA-approved software program for treatment of insomnia that worked better than a drug, I think you'll see a lot of doctors prescribing these things. And if a doctor says to you as a patient, hey, before I put you on Ambien, why don't you try this clinically validated six-week program for insomnia, and let's see if it helps you first. We also have a program for the treatment of heart attack. We're actually uh, co collaborating with a large uh, a university on that. Um, and again, this is, th this is an example. This is actually a drug plus uh, device. Uh, but again, we are, we are going through the, the FDA regulated pathway uh, with the aim to get our software approved uh, with, an, with an indication. Um, so this is for patients that were hospitalized with a heart attack. Uh, and we aim to show and, and have pretty good reason, I think, at this point um, to believe that we will be able to show very significant and meaningful both health and economic outcomes in this space. I won't talk too much ab about our platform or our m machine learning, but suffice to say we are you know, no less than half data science company, have very strong machine learning capabilities where our platform is continuously adapting and personalizing our therapeutic uh, interventions and, and messaging, and that's, we think, part of why and how we're able to drive uh, really more engagement than, than most people, if not, if not anyone else. I will uh, end there, I guess, uh, in the interest of, of maybe opening it up for questions. Um, so feel free if anyone has any questions for, for myself or Dutera, um, please ask.